Now let's talk about joysticks. Joysticks give us an on-stage control that allows us to create animations by panning through different timelines. Let's start by looking at a joystick. To create a joystick, we can either find it in the bone menu or by hitting J. Once we've activated the joystick tool, you'll notice that the cursor changes and lets us know that we can add a new joystick. We can add the joystick by clicking on the stage. You'll notice that we not only get a joystick on the stage, but we also see that it's added to the hierarchy. With the joystick selected, you'll notice a number of properties that we can customize in the inspector. The first is the handle. Now, these numbers are measured in percents, and that is the percent along the uh, different axis that our joystick has, and those are actually gonna control the um, timelines or the scrubbing through of the timelines that we're gonna assign down here later. The position property describes the position of the joystick. So you'll notice that as we move the joystick around, um, it's being measured from the artboard's origin, and this isn't really a property that we're ever gonna animate. Um, this is just uh, so that you know where your joystick exists in um, world space. The size property allows us to uh, customize the size of the joystick so we can make the joystick uh, skinnier or we can make it wider um, if we want to have a little extra room on the X or a little less room on the Y. Yeah, it just depends on what you want. The origin property is similar to the other origins that we have in things like groups uh, and shapes and things like that. Um, it helps us determine the position of our joystick, and you'll notice that as we move the origin, the joystick is shifting around, but the position property hasn't actually changed. Uh, you shouldn't need to adjust the origin on the joystick. The draw in world space toggle will allow the um, joystick to scale up and scale down with your uh, zoom level. So you'll notice that when it's unchecked, the joystick never changes size. But if we have the draw in world space checked, you'll notice that as we zoom out, the joystick gets smaller. And as we zoom in, it stays its normal size. Now, this can be handy if you decide to, let's say, make a hierarchical connection with, let's say, like your eye main and you move it and you want it in context of the object that you're animating. And so you start moving this eye main around, you'll see that the joystick uh, will move along with it. And also if you shrink that object down, the joystick gets smaller. So let's say you want to um, use your joystick to uh, turn on different animations within a nested artboard. This is a good option to use. These two drop downs are where we will be um, assigning different timelines that we'll be scrubbing through as we use the joystick handle. Uh, since we don't have any timelines created yet, let's hold off talking about this uh, for a moment. The handle source allows us to select objects on the stage that can control the position of the handle. So let's say we click on this, you'll see that the editor changes and tells us to select a target. So I've created this group and I can target that group. You can see that now when I move the group, it's moving that handle. A more practical use of this handle source is um, to target something, um, target a group that will move within the joystick area. And this group has a translation constraint. So if you haven't seen the video on that, be sure to watch it. This is constrained to this object here. So you can see that as I move this object, it's moving within that joystick area we could target this group that's um, up here and then move this control on the artboard and you can see that we could adjust the position of that joystick. So let's say for example, we made a slider, we could use this as the object that we're moving when we actually control the slider and you can see that that would control the playback on our joystick. Now that we've looked at the inspector properties of a joystick, let's hop over to animate mode and get the joystick working. The first thing we need is a timeline. Now I've set up a very basic timeline and all it does is move our eye from one side of the artboard to the other along the X axis. The first thing that we need is some timelines. In this case, I have one timeline and all I've done is key the X position of this eye main. You can see that I have two keys and it makes the eye move from the left side of the artboard to the right side. Now I can assign this timeline to the joystick Using this drop down menu, we can either assign it to the x axis of the joystick or the y axis. 
In this case, I'll assign it to the X. Now to see the joystick in motion, we'll need to add a new timeline. You'll notice that as I move the joystick handle, the eyeball's now moving. And that's because we're panning through that X timeline that was created here. Now just because our motion is on the X axis, we don't have to assign this timeline to the X axis. In fact, we could assign it to the Y axis. So now when we move the joystick up and down, you can see that the eyeball moves left and right. I'm gonna switch this back to the X axis and we're gonna talk about this toggle here. This invert toggle essentially flips the timeline over. So now when we're at the left, we're actually at 100% on the timeline or the end of the timeline. And when we're at the right, we're at the beginning of the timeline. Depending on your expected results, when you're moving your joystick, you may consider flipping one of those axes. Now, let's add a new timeline to this joystick to see it work in both the X and Y axis at the same time. So I'll add a new timeline. We'll call this timeline the Y timeline. And we're just gonna move the same group that we were moving before, this I main. We're gonna move it up on the Y and then go to the end of the timeline and move it down. Now I can go back into the joystick and add that Y timeline to the uh, Y axis of our joystick, go back to our other timeline, and you can see that now as I move this, uh, only the Y axis is moving. Now the reason that that's happening is because if we go back into our Y animation and expand these keys, you'll notice that we have an X axis key. That means that the joystick is actually trying to mix this key with the X axis keys that we have here, and those are conflicting, so it's not actually moving. So what we really wanna make sure that we do is that on the different timelines that we're creating, we're only keying specific properties. So on the X axis, I only wanna key X properties, and on the Y axis, I only wanna key Y keys. So we can delete that, and now when we go back to our timeline, as I move the I around, you can see that the eye is moving just like we would expect. Now, as you can see, I've added a few different keys on the X and Y axis for different shapes. So I'm moving the position of the iris on both the X and Y axis. As you can see, when we go back to that timeline where we're controlling the eye, we can get a lot more complex motion out of the eye because we've added in those extra few keys. Keep in mind that you can add as many joysticks to an artboard as you want so long as they don't have conflicting keys.